Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, thank you. Yes. I like that. Good energy. I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so I'm ready to do this thing. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, obviously, this is the most important presentation um, at the conference, so I'm so, so glad you guys figured that out. Um, so look around. These are the, good, these are the people who know what, what they should be learning here. Um, so you can follow them around if you don't know what session to go to. Um, I've, I've met a lot of you. Thank you for those of you um, kind enough to shake my hand and tell me a little bit about why you're here and what you're looking for. Um, it's too late for me to rewrite my presentation, so um, I hope that this is, uh, this is what you're all looking for, but this is basic DevOps for Drupal. And I'm really gonna, I'm, I'm really hoping this is basic. Um, so for some of you are um, sysadmins um, who are looking for how to apply uh, DevOps, DevOps principles to a new Drupal site. Um, some of you are, um, are front end or um, content editors who are looking to develop new skills. Um, others of you are, are um, just webmasters um, uh, or senior Drupal people who are just here to judge me and you're all welcome. <laughs> Welcome to be here. So I hope everyone gets what they, they need out of it. Um, I'm, I'm used to walking around, but I can't, I, I can't move. So I usually, all of the flips and the um, acrobat stuff that I usually do, um, I'm not gonna be able to do this year. Um, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to stay close to the mic. Um, okay, uh, so my presentation is on, um, is deployed. So if you wanna follow along, or at any time you get bored and you want to go ahead, um, you can follow me at um, basic DevOps for Drupal um, at um, HerokoApp.com. Everyone's getting seated. Okay. Let's get going. So my name is Michelle Krejci. I'm a warrior princess but I'm also a software engineer at Pantheon.io. I'm gonna talk a lot about me um, in this particular presentation, uh, but you can find me on Twitter at DevNishev, or you can find me on my website, Krejci.io. I had some naming collisions there. It'd be nice if my branding was all Krejci, but um, there's a 17-year-old who grabbed that first, so damn it. Okay, so the first rule of DevOps is there is no such thing as DevOps. Um, if you're gonna become part of this cult, the, the DevOps community, um, the first thing that you're gonna need to acquire is sort of a patronizing tone when you talk about DevOps. And you need to be able to say things um, really condescendingly about, um, it doesn't even make sense to have like a DevOps engineer. I mean, what, what does that even mean? Um, and you'll have to practice that a lot. It took me a long time to form this air of smugness about me, but um, I've acquired it, so you can too. And uh, it's important to understand where that kind of attitude comes from about what is the, wh why do you even want to know about DevOps? DevOps is just like, no one even knows what it means. And, and really where that comes from is a, a deep sense that this stuff is so important and so critical to everyone who belongs in the software engineering pipeline that to say that it's a special skill that you should acquire or a special thing you should look for seems completely redundant. It would be like looking for um, a critical thinking engineer. Like, it, it, it just, it feels so basic to say I need someone with DevOps skills to the people who are in DevOps that, that it just, it, it seems like like, why wouldn't you have critical thinking skills? You know, why, why do you need a special critical thinking engineer? What, what about the other engineers? Um, so even though it's sort of a condescending attitude, to know that, that it's coming from a place of wanting everyone to have these skills and, and wanting it to become basic and common sense. If you're um, interested in knowing more about what it sounds like for proper DevOps people to talk about there being no such thing as DevOps, uh, there's a link here to a really great presentation about DevOps Kung Fu um, by uh, a chef a maintainer. Um, I recommend uh, taking a look at it. But the second rule of DevOps is that DevOps is definitely a thing. 
uh, and it's a real thing. And let's all just agree that it's a set of skills that everyone should have, that they're worth, it's worth your time and it's worth acquiring. So here's my agenda, and I mean it programmatically, but also philosophically what my agenda is. I want to talk, talk to you about why you should acquire these skills and why you should acquire them early on, early and often. And then I'm going to walk you through essentially a, a, lightning, a lightning talks, a series of lightning talks um, about what those skills are and where to get started with them. If it looks like at the end I'm rushing because there's a lot of stuff to go through, that's totally planned. I'm just going to rush to the end. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go slow towards the beginning. And if you ever feel like uh, this is too much for me, you can just kind of tune out and let this happen. You can just, uh, you, can, you can come back later if you ever feel like this is where my uh, train gets off. All right, so a little bit about my first agenda topic, why I think you should acquire these skills early. Back when I, um, I, I have a um, PhD in philosophy, and uh, my story has, I, I, I was not programming at all. My family did not own a computer growing up. I got my first computer in college, um, and I installed malware um, uh, stuff on it, and also malware anti-stuff on it, and that was about the extent of my um, knowledge of computers. Um, and after I finished my dissertation, I was so burnt out, I thought maybe computers are an important thing to learn about. Um, so I uh, taught myself some Drupal. Um, I had um, done some things in graduate school with Drupal um, previously. And when I set off for myself on a path of, I'm going to learn Drupal, this is what I thought it was going to be like. I thought I was going to like, all right, well, Drupal's in PHP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn PHP. And then that's going to look like this. I'm going to just figure out what the dollar sign stuff means. And, and then there's all these for loops. Uh, that looks like a thing. So I'm going to learn how to do that. And then, and then I'll learn how to build a module. And, uh, and after I master those things, I'm going to learn how to make everything look good. Um, so I'm going to learn stuff that seems to do that, like the JavaScript and stuff. Um, and responsive is a thing, and I'll learn that thing. Um, and then after I get better at making stuff look good, I'm going to get better at it, get better at PHP, which probably means like algorithms. So I'll do like space-time complexity stuff. Um, and then I'll, you know, patch core at some point, and I'll, then I'll test some things. Um, and then, like, maybe for extra credit, because I'm going to be so awesome at this, um, I'll, like, figure out what Apache does. I'll, you know, like, that'll be extra. Um, and I'll just, all that stuff on the terminal that people are doing. Um, and then maybe I'll do some, like, MySQL, just, you know, just to know how to do that stuff. So um, that went really well. Um, and I'm a really good programmer now. So um, this is what it actually looked like. Uh, I had a Windows uh, machine, so um, when I was ready to um, learn PHP and learn the Drupal, I had to install it. So that means I had to set up a WAMP, uh, whatever that was at the time. Um, and then I had to quickly learn Linux um, because, <laughs> because uh, I, Windows, I like, ran into Windows stuff immediately, and every tutorial was um, not useful for me. Um, so I immediately went to install a virtual machine and had to learn uh, Linux, uh, which I wasn't expecting. And, and then I found out that like, um, the websites I was working with, they, like, their databases were on a server, and everyone was, was working on configuring a server up on, on this other thing that wasn't my computer, and I had like, no conceptual. So, so there's like a, a server, like a win like a browserless server somewhere where there's a database. Uh, and, and I just like made this very fragile script that would pull down the database and push it up. And I didn't know what it was doing, but like it was super important. Um, and then my first assignment, I was given this really amazing blog post um, by David Strauss and um, the brilliant Mark Tunison about um, they had just deployed The Economist. Um, so this was Four Kitchens and The Economist. They had just deployed The Economist, and they set up this continuous integration 
um, system with selenium and Jenkins. It was really fancy. I was like running on a cron job. Like every morning, it would run through the Economist and do a bunch of tests with selenium and then take pictures of it. And my very first boss for my very first Drupal project ever handed me this blog post and said, do this. <laughs> so um, I thought I was going to be writing PHP, but no, I was writing selenium and looking up Selenese because that IDE didn't work and it was just, ugh, I hope no one knows what I'm talking about, but if you do, let's get a drink. Um, <laughs> and it turns out that when you test something that's not repeatable or deployable, you're, you're testing something in production, the best I can tell you is like, yep, that's broken. That's it. Like, I can just be like, oh, broke today. And it just ended up, like, every day it was just broken. And then, like, I had to just figure out if it was my test that broke, if it was your stuff that broke. It was completely useless information. Um, and one of the reasons why it was completely useless is because we had no repeatable install process. We had no way of managing our config. It was all shared databases, so it's not like you could roll it back. If, if I found something wrong, I, can't, I couldn't be like, reset, reset. No, it was no resetting. It was in the database. It was done. So I started to work on um, creating repeatable processes. All right, well, we're going to need to be able to roll back a deploy if deploys aren't working. If something's breaking, we have to be able to, like, to go back, to undo. Um, and so that meant learning virtual machines and Vagrant and containerizing our build environment and learning configuration management. And that meant a lot of features foo in Drupal 7. And, um, and turns out BHAT was way better um, than uh, Selenium. And I was able to actually start, start validating that things were working through the whole development process and be able to pinpoint where things broke. Um, and then I had to be able to manage the deployment of this stuff because we had this virtual environment. So I learned Chef. And Composer is not really an orchestration tool, but let's just humor me. Um, and I started to, to get really um, uh, uh, precise about what exactly I was testing. I didn't want to test Drupal core. I wanted to test my configuration. And Composer helped me manage um, what I was testing and, um, and, and keep the core out of the repository. And I became like a small core proponent. And it was, felt great to be opinionated and smug. Um, and all of this would have been way better if I had learned some basic DevOps skills to begin with. I, my, my mindset was stuck on, I'm going to learn PHP, and then I'm going to be a great Drupal developer. Uh, but my, my thesis statement here is that learn DevOps skills. And if you're a mentor, if you're teaching people, um, I think you should start with basic DevOps skills. So let's go through what those are. There are some prerequisites here. This is basic, um, but I'm expecting everyone to know some things. Um, first, I expect just the basics of the command line. I've, I'm linking here to a tutorial. It's actually a tutorial from Learn Python the hard way, but there's no Python in this particular tutorial. I like it because it's good for both Windows and um, um, and Linux Unix systems, um, and it and it like talks at a level that I wish someone had talked to me when I was learning the command line. Also, you should know the basics of Git. I'm linking to another good tutorial here. Um, you should know what an SSH key is, and you should have a GitHub account. Uh, and I'm linking here to what that is and some things you should know. All right, this is controversial, <laughs> but I think you need access to a Linux and Unix environment. I know I just said that uh, like you can learn the basics of the command line on Windows, but um, I wish someone had told me earlier, I spend a lot of time working on Windows as a very new engineer, and it is rough. It is a mean thing to do to somebody. Um, every, you know, you can get them going, but like every stack overflow, every answer, like it starts with a dollar sign, and that's super confusing when you're like in the Linux environment and you're just learning. Please, out of the kindness of your heart, you know, if you see someone learning DevOps in Windows, just install a virtual machine with Linux on it and just, it, it would put them out of their misery. Um, I just, we can't pretend like you can learn this stuff on Windows. It's really, really difficult. So uh, 
rough. Um, Here, Mac yeah, Unix. Yeah, right. yeah, Mac, Mac works. Um, finally, uh, you need a willingness to ask questions. Nice job, sir. He's a plant. Um, <laughs> You need, you need to have the willingness to an, a, ask questions, and, and like questions that you know are so just so stupid. This, this is a true exchange that happened on my first day. Um, I, this was over Skype, and uh, I pinged Brant Wynn, uh, who, I, who I worked with, now works with Acquia, and he's a superstar. He was one of my mentors, and um, I had a very tenuous grasp of what it meant to put together a Drupal. And I just knew, I was smart enough to know that you need a database. So I was like feeling pretty good about asking like, hey, so where's the, where's the database? <laughs> and he responded with this. <laughs> um, it is really hard for me to remember how many questions I had when I saw that. I. I had no idea what was happening here. This isn't obviously the actual thing, but um, I didn't even know where to begin. Like, this meant nothing to me. Like, I, I, do you put this in a Word document and send it <laughs> to someone? So, is this a, an, an email address? Um, it looks like one. I, I didn't, I had no idea where to go. I had no idea what SSH meant. I, like, that could have been like the name of, I, I, had no, I didn't know, that could have been a person or you know, um, a, like a nickname or an acronym. Like everything about this was so confusing. This was the best I could do. Uh, <laughs> 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 and like Brent took it like a trooper because, <laughs> I mean I know like he must have been thinking like, oh God, <laughs> this woman is so screwed. Um, <laughs> And, and, I, and I hope that if you, if you don't know why this is funny, listen, you got this. Like, you're gonna be okay. And if you do get why this is funny, next time someone asks you a question like this that makes your heart break, uh, just, they got this. They got it. They, they can do this. Like, this is, we are not wizards. Like, we're, like, we all gotta, like, remember what this was like, right? Okay. All right, so. Um, once you got, once you feel comfortable with what, what just happened there, um, the next thing you want to do is you want to learn some basic commands. There's a lot of them. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna. These are sort of simple commands, um, and we're gonna. Uh, here's some tooling. Just, just Vim. Just do it. I, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> um, here are some goals of learning the commands and tools. The, the goal. Aside from looking really cool on phone calls with clients, you'd be like, "Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ping your site and just, oh yeah, it's up, and look at the headers." And like, you definitely want to look cool in front of your clients, but really, um, you you want to gain the insight that like most of the web is just te text. You're just sending text and you're manipulating it, and there are various tools to chop that up and to to inspect it and to search through it, but. When you, you want to gain the sense that like we're just sending text, we're sending strings all over the place. That's all like the web really is, and and the more that that becomes intuitive, that you're just organizing and manipulating text, you start to get a DevOps mindset, which is this stuff is manageable. It's not all wizardry. We can we can inspect this stuff. We can uh, we we can secure it. We can block things. We can. Uh, we can look at error reports. You, you want to get that sense as soon as possible. And you want to be able to gain an understanding that you can observe the health of a system, you can observe what's going on with a system um, outside of your own computer. Your computer can talk to another computer without opening a browser and get a lot of information about how that thing is doing. You can, you can get it, you, you're able, you have the power to talk to other things. All right, this is the only live demonstration portion um, of my presentation, so don't screw it up, Michelle. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple commands. Um, the first ones are text manipulation. 
So I think you need to, this is, this, this is going back to the, the concept that there's such things as strings and you're um, compressing strings and you're expanding strings. Um, as soon as possible, you should force yourself to um, get links off of the internet on the command line. It, it will help you. It will form a good, a good practice. So for example, if you're going to Drupal and you decide like, you know what, Michelle really sold me. I'm ready to try Drupal. You don't go here. I went to the wrong link. You want to go to get get the code because you're 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 done. You're going to get the code, and we're going to download um, Drupal 8.3.1 because semantic versioning for the win. Okay, and we're going to grab the tarball. So what that looks like in a DevOps world is you don't click the button, you right click the button, and we're going to copy the link address. This is the new, this is your new DevOps world, guys. We're not gonna, we are no longer button clickers. We are <laughs> inspecting what we're doing before we install it into our system. Um, and you use um, wget. I had to look up what that means. Um, and you, and you, everyone should look up what it means. It turns out it just means like wget. So just wget it. <laughs> I don't do that. I'm gonna go into a test directory because I'm gonna test stuff. Um, and. This is really cool. You just wget and you paste that link, and it's going to grab that thing for you, um, just just like clicking a button. Except now you didn't untar it. It didn't like do things for you because sometimes systems make assumptions. And you're a DevOps person now. Your DevOps mindset. You got to like, you want to know what's going on. You want to know did it actually click connect to Drupal? Maybe it went somewhere else. Is there? You're suspicious of everyone now. You're just you're a DevOps person. Like you can't trust anyone. Um, this is good. We're all we're we're grow this is growth. So W get to grab a link, um, and now we we've, we've got it, and we've got a tarball. Listen, if you can tarball foo, uh, this is this will save your life one day, um, being able to tar things from memory, um, and learning learning how to untarball things from the command line um, is one of the wizardry skills that will make um, your friends um, think you're a wizard. So. Here we go. We're going to tar. And the command is x, which means extract. E extract, which starts with an e, but we're not going to question that. <laughs> OK? And we're going to extract because it's a file, so we're going to use f. Um, and I want it to be verbose. And for reasons that tar won't explain to me, you have to do the v after the x, not the f. Just remember, this is important DevOps stuff to remember. This is the kind of knowledge DevOps people have. They know where to put the letters. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it, it needs oh it needs an F option, which means I need a file. Um, good call. That's that's fair. I'm just gonna untarball that thing. Woohoo! And now it's been untarballed. Um, and if you're thinking, clicking the button would have done that. You are right but you are a DevOps person now. You're not clicking buttons anymore. You are inspecting things. Now we want to make sure that we actually have the thing that we want. Um, so a good way to do that is to, to use cat, which will just dump something out. So let's see. I want to know, did I actually get um, Drupal 8? Or maybe some spyware? Um, yeah, that definitely looks like Drupal 8. I just concatenated the composer JSON. Check that out. There's my composer JSON. It says that um, it's from the package Drupal 8. That looks like Drupal 8. This definitely looks like Drupal 8. Um, great. Concatenated. Then you want to grep. All right. Grep will change your life. Uh, and the first time I, I, like, I used to grep like this. I had <laughs> um, and this was intuitive to me. What I thought I was doing is like, just look, look for stuff in my thing. Like, and it, would, it was waiting like this. Um, it, you just need another, you need two arguments for grep. You need the thing you're looking for and where you're looking for it. Uh, so I could do, um, and I'm going to pass it some letters because um, learning DevOps is about learning letters. Um, N means give me the line number. R means recursively. So I want you to look through directories. Don't just look, don't just look at the directory I'm pointing to. I means give it, to, you know, whether it's, um, uh, case insensitive. So I, I want stuff capitalized, I want stuff lowercase. And I'm going to look for the words deploy, and, and I'm going to look for it in the Drupal repository. 
and it's gonna grab through it, and it's gonna find every instance, because everything is a string, and you can search for strings, and it's, it just smashes it all together and looks for a string match, um, and I can find all the instances of deploy. This is super useful when you're you're looking for, you know, a, you, you find an error, or, and you find an error message in Drupal, copy paste that onto the command line, grab through the directory, where did that error, where was that error thrown? Um, you can look through the error logs, learning grep, important DevOps code. Okay, now Vim, um, you, you, you need to be able to, to connect with your, you, you need to be able to use something other than a, um, a Word document um, to read stuff. You can't, you can't just open everything in Word, which I might have done at one point. Um, you can't do that. Um, you need to be able to do this from the command line. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time uh, working on Vim, but um, I, I'll show you some tutorials at the end. Um, here's a good thing to, to start learning Vim, though. Um, if man means manual, so that means like open the tutorial. So if you do something like man grep, it automatically opens this in a, in a Vim um, editor for me. Um, and learning how to do something like um, open man Vim and do a backslash, um, Uh, yeah, do a, ba do a backslash to look for something like file. It's a good way to, um, it's a good thing to learn, um, then to be able to close out of it with w, um, WQ. I'll show you a tutorial at the end that's much easier than the one that I just gave you. Um, but finally, pipe grep. So um, the power of pipe grep, and uh, DevOps people call themselves like, the brotherhood or the sisterhood of the pipe greppers um, is that once you understand that you can you can um, take the output of something and put it into the output of something else, that's incredibly powerful. So you can do something like history, pipe, grep, Drupal, and it'll go through all the history of what I just ran through with you, and it will output all of the um, all of the instances that I have ever used that. So everything that you use on the command line, everything that you type on the command line is stored as a string. And if you output all of that into grep, you can search through the string. Okay, networking. Um, we're gonna go through a few command lines. Curl, dig, and ping. Um, I use curl. So, so now when you're, in a, when you're in the DevOps mindset, you want to be able to observe systems that are not in your computer. Um, so you're you're working from home, and um, I want to just do I, I want to take a look at what's going on with Drupal.org. And the command curl I means I just want to look at um, I want to look at the headers from Drupal.org, and looking at the headers tells me a lot. It tells me that this thing is not around. It does not exist. It is moved permanently. Um, so I can go to where it recommends me to go, which is HTTPS Drupal. And this tells me some more information, but it, it's returning a 301. A 301 means you have not reached what you're looking for. So good to know. Tells me that I need to go to www.drupal.org. At last, I get a 200, which means I'm good, I'm where I wanna be, and I can get all sorts of information out of this. I know that it's running on Nginx, I know what um, version of Nginx it's running on. Um, I, can, I can see that um, the cache was a miss, which means I'm loading the full page, I didn't hit a, a cache edge. Um, I can see that it's using Fastly, um, so it, it, it has a Fastly debug. Uh, so if I had access to their Fastly um, admin, I could sort of um, debug this. Um, and all sorts of great information, um, including who's hosting it. Um, and I can see a, um, that the reference to home points to this node, uh, 2,709, 2, anyway, more than that. I can see exactly what node number this um, uh, particular URL hits, which uh, is useful, useful information. Okay, that's curl. Uh, if I didn't pass the, the, um, 
the just show me the headers, um, it would give me the whole page, um, which means I'm looking just like I would um, at, at the source. Um, so I'm looking at um, the full source, um, and I could grep through that for something like, oops. Oh, and then I'll put it, all right, whoop. Um, so, so you can, you can essentially look at the DOM and inspect the DOM and inspect the headers with curl the same way that you would uh, inspecting it on a browser. Um, particularly useful when it doesn't actually have a browser for you to, to look at. Um, something like dig, which we'll go through real quick. Um, dig is for domain, um, um, for domain information. So if you're playing with C names, if you're playing with A records, you want to look at something like dig to be able to um, look at what's hosting, make sure everything is said correctly. I'll make this larger. Um, and you can look at the www.org. Um, and I, I can see that it's on Fastly. I can see what the IP addresses are. Um, and finally, uh, a ping. A ping just c checks the connection from one thing to the next. So it's checking my connection from my local um, environment to um, duple.org, um, and it's over an IS ISCP, um, ISMP connection, um, so it doesn't work for everything. Um, for example, if I looked up, um, Uh, if I looked up my own uh, presentation, which is what you're looking at here, it will get a, it'll give you a timeout um, because uh, Heroku doesn't allow you to ping the environment. But it's one way to check if something, if the service is up or not. Okay, those commands. Thank you for sitting through that. Those are eight commands that I think you should know. We are done with the command line portion of the presentation. Um, but I think you uh, should spend some time investing in feeling comfortable with the command line, I really recommend a game called Vim Adventures, which is a like online browser game that uses Vim, Vim commands to um, solve puzzles and um, it sort of like ups your Vim skills as you go along. And it, it helped me get a little bit more comfortable with um, manipulating um, uh, a Vim environment. I also use Vimium on my browser. Um, to help me feel more comfortable with Vim, so it uses Vim commands so I can navigate through the browser. And finally, um, like my, my biggest advice to you for commands and tools is anytime you come across something like this, which is a curl dash O um, of a URL, and then it PHPs a installer far, um, and this is how you install Terminus onto your, um, onto your computer. Before you do anything like this, you should stop and take a look at what's actually going on. Um, a, a DevOps mentality would be to look at and figure out exactly what you're about to do. Um, oftentimes, you're pulling something off of the web and you're piping it into something else that runs some script on your computer. Um, and you're now going to be very suspicious of everything that does that. Um, and don't do it unless you, you feel like, okay, I have some sense of what's going on there. All right, so once you've um, mastered commands and tooling or you feel more comfortable on the command line, um, this is a good time to get, um, to get more comfortable with scripting and writing scripts. And it doesn't have to be really crazy. I think writing scripts for Drupal um, as, as the first thing can be a little bit intimidating. Um, but you want to first start by um, automating the boring stuff in your own life. Um, look at what your own daily routines are and see if you can write some scripts for them. Here are some of the very first things that I wrote when I got used to um, um, uh, writing scripts. So I wanted, every morning I had a routine where I would get up and I would try to force myself to write things. Um, and so I, I, I had set as a goal for myself for New Year's Eve or, or like a New Year's resolution, I'm going to write for um, 45 minutes every day. Um, and I wanted to make it enjoyable. So I created an alias called Sunshine, for, so I wanted a, a reward for myself. And it's this beautiful, I, I downloaded this, um, this MP3, it's just an MP3 sound, and it goes like this. It, 
is just, it's a lovely good morning sound. So I gave it an alias called Sunshine, so that whenever I typed Sunshine into my, um, my computer, it would play this, mu this beautiful music. And I also aliased Sunshine with Morning Sunshine. I don't know why I did that, but that felt next level to me at the time. And, and then I created an alias for myself. Um, so I had all of these aliases that started with Mishev, which was like all my personal stuff. And what this alias did, uh, you could see that I got pretty used to the terminal um, and pretty carried away with stuff. I, um, I create, had aliases for, for um, where a draft directory is, and then I aliased um, date, the, the date in the, like in, in the right format. Um, and so in the morning, um, I could type Michev right, and it would go into my draft directory. It would make a directory for today. It would go into that day, and it would create two pages. It would create a private um, .md file and a public .md file, and then it would open one of the private um, um, files. And in the morning, I could type good morning, and it would open all of my Tmux windows and split it the way that I wanted it to be split. And it would say to me, another day, Michelle. And it is the start of, and then it would say the date, but it would say it in this like robotic voice, like another day, Michelle. It is the start of, da, da, da. good luck with your writing. And then it would open all of, it would play the, the sound and it would open, it was just, and I did that for like two weeks and that was fun. Um, <laughs> And I got really sick of like the noise, but um, it was it was really uh, uh, I ended up par like parsing this down without the music and the voice, and it just like opened my routine for the day. Um, and and this this did take some time because I was learning how to script. It took some time to learn how to write aliases. Um, but think about how much time you spend in the morning. You have a routine. You, you open certain windows. You look at your email. You, you, there, there are things that you do every morning. And if you just took the time to figure out how to script all of that and write just good morning on your terminal and just all opens up, um, you know, then you can spend more time writing more scripts and it'll be a recursive thing. Um, the next thing I wrote after I like uh, aliased my morning routine is I aliased making a Drupal module. So uh, I made a command for myself so I could just say um, like make make low, low key dot Drupal and then I would pass it an argument of what uh, module I was building. And it would create that directory and then it would create a dot info file and there's a way that dot info files should be set up and, um, and it would create a dot module file and uh, it, would, it just scripted all of this for me because all of that is completely routine. That is not a good way to do that, by the way. But, um, you know, it's a start. Um, so I recommend, uh, I guess this is, um, uh, the, you know, af after you've written some, some aliases, something that's been really useful for me is that I took all of my, um, I took all of my, uh, root, all of the things that I install onto my Mac, all of those, like, you know, I know that I'm gonna need Git, I know that I'm gonna need Docker, and I scripted this into one install.sh file. And it's not pretty, but um, I've used it several times now to rebuild my Mac. If anyone's ever had, like, gotten a new computer, you start a new job, or something catastrophic happened to your computer, and you have to reinstall all of your setup, you've just gotten comfortable with everything. Having a script like this, um, that this reminds me that I need to get Xcode, uh, it, it knows that I like to call my computer Loki, um, and it runs a, all of my, my brew install commands with, and I, I keep this up to date, this is in a Git repository, so these are all of the things that I use um, to, um, uh, to build my machine. And a practice that I've gotten used to is every six months, I delete everything off of my computer. Um, uh, my, my things are stored in the cloud on, on Dropbox and S3. Um, and I clean out my computer and I run this install script. Um, and it's really good practice for having control over your local environment. And that's what scripting is. It's being able to be very precise and controlled. Nothing is stored in the mind of a human. I don't have to remember all the things I like to have installed on my local computer, um, I have this written down so that if my computer you know, needs to be reinstalled, nothing, I, I'm able to do that over and over again. Um, 
This is exactly what you want to be able to do with Drupal. You want to be able to define the environment that Drupal lives in, but you should start at home first. You should start um, getting some control over how you configure your environment. Okay. So now we have some command lines. Now, now you're feeling more comfortable um, parsing text, uh, inspecting um, things in the system. You are starting to gain some tighter control over your own local environment. Um, now you could start with continuous integration. Uh, so continuous integration, just like you're trying to control your local environment and control the system um, that you work in, continuous integration uh, means that you are controlling the environment that your applications and the things that you create live in, um, um, that you create. So uh, if you create something, can it live somewhere besides your own computer? And how do you know that it's okay? Um, there's a number of tools, so I, I list here some tools um, that you can use. Uh, Jenkins is a thing. Uh, I don't recommend that you uh, start with Jenkins, but um, uh, Circle CI and Travis CI and Bamboo are all um, you, you, um, free for public repositories. Um, I'm going to show you uh, my Circle um, build. So I, I have a tutorial for this on my on my blog post about how to set up continuous integration with Drupal. But Drupal is a terrible teacher for continuous integration. If you have never touched continuous integration in your life, if you've never touched Circle. Um, if, this would, if this, this would be completely new to you, I don't think you should start with Drupal. I think you should start with my presentation. Um, my presentation uh, literally is an example of continuous integration. Uh, this is my repository. It's um, a reveal JS. And uh, you can go visit it. Um, I have a link on my, on my slide, and you see that there's a link to circle here. Um, and Circle, uh, on, a, on a deploy to master, um, Circle will run through my instructions, and my instructions are to build this thing and then to run a HTML um, linter, because my presentation is in HTML. Um, and you can see that um, there's a lot wrong with my presentation. It is, uh, it is pretty awful what um, my HTML skills look like. I have not gotten to the learn how to make things look good part of my um, journey yet. Um, but I do know enough to pipe the output of that failure into a success uh, <laughs> with great power comes great ability to ruin things. Um, so I know enough to make this look like I just passed when I didn't. And just to remind myself that maybe I should learn this stuff one day. I should learn how to um, write HTML. Um, and after it runs through some tests and um, reminds me that I should learn how to what I'm doing, um, it deploys this to Heroku. So I have some um, Heroku integration here. You can take a look at, um, um, at what my circle looks like. Uh, so I recommend that uh, if you're completely new to continuous integration, you've never done continuous integration before, I think, like, try making a presentation, try working with some HTML, go back to the basics, um, and make that into a continuous integration repository. That's a way better and way safer way um, to get used to uh, writing tests, um, working on a deployment, um, and feeling comfortable with what that process looks like. All right. The next thing that you'll get to is web servers. So this is the thing, this is the, um, the part of the WAMP stack that I thought that only super advanced, smart um, MIT students um, had any knowledge of. This is the, I, I had no idea when I started Drupal what, what Apache was. I, I thought it was some, I, 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 couldn't, I could not tell you. I faked it for a long time, but I had no idea. Um, and I think it's probably because it's a bad name. We call it web servers, but I think like it's way better to think of it as web bouncers. Like it's not, it, it's, a, it's a different, like they're the guys that like stand in the front and like everyone's got to talk to the bouncer before they go in. 
and the bouncers are given certain rules about who to let in, you know, like, oh, you know, t tonight, like, only blue people in blue shirts can come in, or, you know, we, like, oh, we're, like, at capacity, you can't let in, you know, anyone who um, looks like they're going to dance crazily or something. I don't know, you know, whatever the rules are that I've, clearly my job as a bouncer did not work out very well. Um, so I want to demystify this for you. It is, it is not as rarefied as it seems. So I'm going to try to explain Nginx config to you using only the, um, uh, the 1,000 most um, common words, which is inspired from an XKCD um, cartoon. Um, so this is, I'm going to explain the Nginx config that you can find on um, the Nginx website under the Drupal um, configuration. And I will tell you that this isn't, this isn't perfect um, Nginx, but here we go. So you'll find this on Nginx. Um, go to the web page, and what this means is, if someone comes looking for this name, you can find them over here. Those are the instructions the bouncer has. And this means, if machines or people come looking for this window picture, um, or this rule for machines, uh, I'm using the 1,000 most common words here, but, um, but a window picture is like that guy, or that guy, okay? Any, any, and a machine thing um, is, is something that machines know what they're looking for. And let them in, but don't record anything about it. And even if it's not, even if it's not what they're looking for, I don't want to know. So this is the ex we don't don't even write down that someone came looking for this thing. Like I don't care. Like this is just the window picture is there, robots there. You don't record anything about it. I don't want to know. It fills up my record machine with too much stuff. This means that. Um, the rule is that only I can make things at the end like this when I'm at home. Um, so that means only when I'm here, which means I'm inside the machine, can I look at stuff like this. This means if people want to look here, these locations, tell them, no, you can't. And if they want to look here, then everyone can see this stuff. Otherwise, if you, if you get to this part of my configuration and they haven't been sent away yet, you tell them that they can go to this receptionist and the receptionist will tell them where to go. So the, ind the index.php file is the receptionist of Drupal. Everyone has to report to the receptionist if they make it through the web server, and the index.php will tell them where to go after that. But if someone wants to look up something here, which is the vendor directory, you're going to return a 404, which means I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even know. Doesn't even, the, uh, which is a not found. So you're just going to pretend like that thing doesn't exist. And then this crazy thing in an N Nginx config that ends in an update.php, this guy over here, this means sometimes you can get things into names that we do not allow if you say another name first. So if you start with update.php, it's a weird, crazy exception in Drupal. And you can get in, so this is a security hazard. And it's sad that people like to use this kind of stuff to break into your files, but that's what web servers are for. And this is a reminder that uh, people who know security and people who are, who are looking out for um, our Drupal well-being um, are really good at finding ways to get into Drupal and reminding us to update our bouncers so our bouncers know what to look for. Um, and, and Nginx is really um, a security protocol measure um, in addition to just being able to serve things fast and everything else. Um, it's the rules about who can get in and who can't. All right. I'm going to rush through these, these last three, um, automation, containers, and cloud. Automation, um, we've already gone through the Nginx config, uh, and you can see that the Nginx config is an important part of the well-being of your ecosystem. 
And because it's an important part of your, um, the well-being of your ecosystem, you need to deploy, you need to care about what your Nginx config looks like outside of your own computer. And so automation is for describing everything that's not Drupal. Your project is more than just uh, config or PHP. It also includes descriptions of PHP packages, Nginx config, uh, MySQL database setup, what your PHP INI set um, looks like. And, and, and automation helps make all of that describing and all of that repeatability a lot easier. What I showed you with my install script, um, my uh, installing my local environment, the same thing can be done with an environment that your Drupal will live in. Your Drupal will have certain um, configuration that's important. Um, and some, some trends with automation um, that are important to note is that um, it used to be that we would write we, we would write our automation tools in such a way that you would apply changes B to A. So you had something running in the cloud, then you had all these changes, and you would run this update script to transform A into B. That's no longer the way things work. Um, you now are not changing A into B. You're removing A and, and um, replacing it with B. And that's a true artifact deployment, where you're not trying to change the state. Changing the state of anything is very difficult, and anyone who's touched Drupal knows how hard it is to change the state of something. It's just as hard to change the state of a system. We're no longer doing that, now we're just replacing the system. Um, and, and to get more of that, I have a repository of Ansible configuration that is not production ready, but it was me learning Ansible and me learning how to configure Drupal environments that you're welcome to play with. It also has a, um, um, a tutorial on it, um, but Gearling Guy is, is really the better tutorial. Um, I, I link here to, um, to his project, Drupal VM. Um, that's a way better way to play with configuring environments um, in container environments. Which brings me to containers. Um, you, you're gonna need a container because you can't take your local environment with you. If you get really good at setting up an Nginx config, really good at setting up PHP, you're not gonna be able to serve people um, from your computer. So you'll need a container. Some, th some trends to know about containers is um, know that virtual machines are out. And um, now that you're in the DevOps um, um, in the know, you're going to say kind of patronizing things about people who use virtual machines. They're so out, they're so 2015. Containers are in. Containers are in because they're cheaper. There's less surface area. Um, they, they're, um, they isolate components, which means I can have my SQL running in one container, my Nginx running in another container, and my PHP runtime environment in another container. And I don't have to update my Nginx every time I deploy my app and I don't have to deploy my app every time I update Nginx. Remember these talking points, this is really important. This is your script, this is what you're gonna say. When you're convincing people that containers are important, the understanding will come later, but the talking points are key, folks. <laughs> There's not great tutorials about containers, uh, which, is, which is interesting. Uh, I'll see if I can do something about it. If you uh, have a good tutorial for containers for Drupal, let me know. But this is a pretty good tutorial. Um, it's for Python, um, but it's, pretty, it's a pretty good hello world playing with a container uh, tutorial. And lastly is, well, not lastly, um, there's the cloud, which my Drupal is, which my presentation is running in. It's running in Heroku. Um, I think, again, learning how to deploy a presentation to Her Heroku or another cloud environment um, is uh, it's good practice. And lastly, there's monitoring. So once you get really good at, um, at creating all these containers, you need to make sure that they're alive. Um, I've, my, my, my thinking about uh, monitoring has changed a lot over the years. Um, I now think of it more in terms of managing risks. Uh, you're not looking for zero errors. You're trying to think about um, what percentage of errors you're okay with and breaking this down into points. Um, I, I would think about monitoring in terms of describing your risk tolerance. There's, there's just the basics of um, is your thing alive in the internet? Does it, is it still serving traffic? Um, but if you run a commerce site, you might have zero risk tolerance for your, um, your uh, checkout cart going down. Um, so maybe you want to be able to look through the logs 
and you want to see how many errors your um, commerce cart is getting. Um, or are people able to check out successfully? And you might want to have a monitor that says, hey, if, um, if the success of checkout to the um, error rate of, or, or the errors of checkout, um, if we're, we have a less than a 99% success rate, I want to create an alert. Um, so you're, you're going to fail sometimes. People aren't going to be able to check out. But if checkout is the most important thing in your website, then you should have a monitor that reports to you when the error rate gets higher than your tolerance. This is a pretty heady topic, um, but the um, first four chapters of Site Reliability Engineering by Google, um, it's free, it's online, uh, and it's a really good way to get your head around describing not looking for the perfect system, but describing what your tolerance is um, and, and creating monitors for each of those um, components. All right. So once you've done all of that, you can learn some PHP. Um, Thank you so much for, for coming to my introduction for DevOps. We have successfully errored, um, exited this program. Um, I'm really curious to know what, what, um, what everyone thinks, um, so please tell me how I did. There's the, that's the evaluation. Um, we didn't have any time for comments and questions because that was intentional. I am avoiding everyone. <laughs> I would like you to all leave here with an assurance that I know everything. Um, but if you do have comments or questions, I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, can you uh, uh, ping me at, at devmishev? My DMs are also open. Um, I'm, I'm around for DrupalCon. Thank you so much for coming. Good luck with um, DevOps. Let me know how it goes.